Good evening, you're watching Left, Right and Center. I'm Nidhi Razdan on the show this Friday night. From Rahul Gandhi to Nitin Gadkari, Arvind Kejriwal announces AAP strategy to target corrupt leaders in the Lok Sabha campaign. Will this strategy work for the AAP at the national level? Also tonight, our special focus, a student from Arunachal Pradesh brutally beaten by a group of men in Delhi's Lajpatnagar area after racist comments on his looks. The boy is dead and the anger and dismay among people from the northeast is real and deep. Is Delhi becoming increasingly intolerant and racist? That will be a little later in the show. But first, our top story tonight. The Aam Aadmi Party has raised its pitch for the Lok Sabha elections with Arvind Kejriwal today announcing that they will target a list of what he called corrupt leaders across party lines, where for the first time they have also accused Rahul Gandhi of being corrupt. With an ambitious target of more than 350 seats and a strong focus on corruption, is the AAP going to prove to be the underdog that surprises? Arvind Kejriwal's pitch for national elections by making corruption allegations against leaders across party lines, including Rahul Gandhi. He read out a list of who he called corrupt leaders against whom the Aam Aadhi Party will contest. Nitin Gadkari. Harana chahiye ke nahi harana chahiye. Salman Khurshid. Mayavati. Rahul Gandhi. Hum koi satta ki rajniti karne ke liye thodi aaye hain. जो आदमी 500 करोड़ रुपए तैयार खर्च करके अपनी ब्रांड बनाएंगे वो इस देश को ईमानदार सरकार देंगे The party has decided to contest more than 350 seats in the Lok Sabha polls an ambitious target for a new party At the national executive meeting of the Aam Aadmi Party the blueprint for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections was decided and amongst the top 3 issues were corruption decriminalization of politics and uprooting dynasty politics in the country they have also zeroed in on 162 seats wherein the sitting MPs are either facing criminal or corruption charges or have been deemed corrupt by the Aam Aadmi Party but will this strategy work for them nationally we are interested not in a third front we are interested in a third or an alternative which can provide a real alternative the parties at the receiving end of kejriwal's campaign have dismissed it while nitin gadkare says he plans to sue keval aarop lagane se koi bhrasht nahi ho jata nitin gadkare ji ke bare mein aaj tak ek bhi aarop koi siddh nahi kar paya hai lists require two things pen and paper and a subjective mind we have not confessed to be an anarchist as the chief minister appears to have done they may be the underdog but will this strategy help aam aadmi party be a giant killer as well in new delhi sonal mehrotra ndtv and we've just heard that the Aam Aadmi Party's National Council has added more names to that list of uh, uh, leaders against whom it's going to field candidates. And that now includes Narendra Modi and Sonia Gandhi as well. Whether they're uh, accusing these leaders of corruption also is still something that we're awaiting a clarification on. But is this a strategy that's going to be a smart one for the Aam Aadmi Party to focus on an issue that has really catapulted it into the limelight, at least in the national capital, and one that could capture the imagination of people in urban centers, in particular in this country. Joining us tonight from the Aam Aadmi Party, we have its new uh, leader and spokesperson Ashutosh from the BJP, its national spokesperson Sudhanshu Trivedi, Mr. Dilip Pargaonko, consulting editor of the Times of India is with us this evening and will be joined shortly by Abhishek Singhvi of the Congress Party. Ashutosh, let me ask you first, uh, you know, today for the first time we heard the Aam Aadmi Party uh, directly accusing Rahul Gandhi of, of being among uh, the list of corrupt politicians that it was going to target. Now that's a pretty serious allegation to make. Uh, on what basis are you saying that Rahul Gandhi, for instance, uh, has indulged in corruption. Do you have still doubt? That, that, that's a big question which I should ask you. What, what has been happening, happening in, uh, in Haryana, in Rajasthan and other places? Robert Badra's name is everybody knows. Where the money is going? We have to find and we should ask these questions. But that's an accusation. Is it based on evidence is my question. Why, why the investigation is not happening? When, when Ashok Khemka has asked for the investigation, what has happened to uh, Ashok Khemka, everybody knows. He has been given charge sheet after charge sheet after charge sheet and after charge sheet. And rather uh, going for an honest investigation, it is Ashok, Ashok Khemka who became a victim, who should be awarded, who should be praised and appreciated. He was being victimized. Why? That raises a certain questions. 
why the why the investigation did not happen why the honest investigation should not happen the investigation should have gone to the bottom of the issue and then if was found not guilty the whole india would have accepted that but the fact is no investigation was done if investigation will not investigation will not happen then there's all the reasons to believe <coughs> that there was a serious corruption allegations so you're making the link to robert wadra you say that rahul gandhi and are you then saying that the sonia gandhi who's now been added by your party to that list is the beneficiary of the same is that the accusation as well and what about the corruption is there a corruption allegation against mr narendra modi because he too is on your list now uh, i'm just saying the list is in public everybody knows about it i don't need any clarification on that the the point is there will there be a corruption free india or not will the parliament be divided of any corrupt politician or not that that's a bigger question the point is if anybody who is who's asking for an investigation no transparent investigation happens in this country especially when the people are powerful and they belong to a particular family or belong to a particular uh, particular state of the society so the question is the system has to be accountable system has to be transparent and if there is a allegation the investigation should happen irrespective of the person which uh, uh, irrespective of the person irrespective of his post irrespective of his alliances and if that is not going to happen then people will will question and that question but has to be answered but unfortunately but ashutosh you, you, you've already declared questions. that these leaders are corrupt before there is an investigation for instance you uh, i am again asking on what basis do you say narendra modi is corrupt or what on, on what evidence do you say that rahul gandhi is a direct beneficiary of uh, robert wadran's murk murky dealings i'm just asking you uh, what the evidence is to to link the two Well, against Mr. Modi, for instance, what what would you say is is the evidence? Do you remember uh, almost a year and a half back there was a press conference held by uh, uh, by Arvind Kejriwal and the Prashant Bhushan? There were serious allegations were were made. There were yes. the serious papers were shown to the whole world. The, the the media has carried those stories. But what happened to that? Why investigation did not happen? And Arvind Kejriwal sat on a dharna asking the fifteen chief fifteen ministers. There were serious allegations. The serious allegations were made against them of the of the, of the corrupt, corrupt practices. Nothing has happened. Why? Why? Why not? Why nothing has happened? If you are if you are clean, if there is nothing to hide, please let the investigation happen. Unfortunately, investigations are not happening, and these people are being promoted. Now somebody has been made as a as a foreign minister after the after these accusations, the allegations. what should we understand the common man wants an answer and there is no answer i'm going to take that then to the congress party and to abhishek singhvi first um, uh, dr singhvi you were dismissive of the aap uh, and and arvind kejriwal in your press conference earlier today saying that anybody can make a list but the fact is that while they may be criticized for for making allegations and they were criticized in the past for what was called shoot and scoot uh, it it has also something that it, that has resonated with people there are serious questions people for instance do ask about mr robert wadra and his links uh, with, with the gandhi family and people want answers and and when they don't get answers, and they don't get investigations then the aap's message does resonate dr singhvi uh look i can be and have been dismissive of certain things which the aap party does and mr kejriwal does but there is no question of being dismissive about corruption let me make two or three things clear but uh, uh, nidhi first and foremost we are at one in the war of corruption but we cannot be at one if your idea of fighting corruption is as if you are in some banana republic where you can publish a list which requires only pen and paper say that xyz is guilty hang him from the nearest post where is the faith in constitutional legal processes this is a free country if you have evidence against xyz you please take recourse to law there is a system by which you can approach a magistrate who can direct investigation and a criminal case there is a system by which you can do pil but can you say that i will for press publicity publish a list i will be judge jury executioner convictor decider everything rolled into one i will damn people i will defame people i will belittle people and that makes me a great crusader for corruption anti corruption because we don't do it therefore we are corrupt look you have let us say 162 people in that list let you produce concrete evidence against five of them take action the law permits you the law permits any citizen it's this is actually nothing but an attempt to play games with the media to get 
relatively cheap and sensationalist publicity. If you are serious about corruption, what you will do is, you will pass the Lokpal as we have done, a, a bill which 99.9% .9 resembles your Anna bill, which you have now outgrown, you think. You will then pass the Ant Prevention of Corruption Act amendment, which we have done. You will pass the whistleblower, which is pending, which will be done in two weeks' time in Parliament in the February session. You're calling it you will pass me? the uh, other... Th Those are structural changes. Please take action, but don't publish these lists. What is the point of a list? Okay, before I get Ashutosh to respond to that, it, let me, it, let me get more, the BJP... More than pure tokenism, pure okay. symbolism, no recourse to law, no faith in constitutional process, and literally saying people that I am decider, I am everything rolled into one. Okay, Sudhanshu Trivedi, the BJP's reaction to this, Mr. Nitin Gadkari has already said today that he's going to sue Arvind Kejriwal for taking his name like that. But now Mr. Modi's name has come into their list, which I'm sure uh, will come, uh, draw your attention. Aam Admi Party is still in a paradox. They are unable to differentiate the agitator's activity and the responsibility of a political party. Act, maturity of a political party and responsibility of being in a constitutional position. I think they are unable to come out of that. They are still in the same mindset. I request them that Mr. Kejriwal should graduate from having a childish enjoyment and pleasure for getting media attention to having the constitutional responsibility of a highest position of a state. You are making such an absurd allegation. I would like to respond. They have made an allegation against Sri Nitin Gadkari on 17th of October 2012 and all the allegations prove false. They are unable to prove a single thing after one and a half year. And if they are asking about the, what, what happened in January 2013, not even a single notice has been served to Mr. Nitin Gadkari despite having a hostile government at the state of Maharashtra and the center. And as far as Mr. Narendra Modi is concerned, I would like to quote only one thing. United States of America, who is not even giving a visa to Mr. Narendra Modi during their U.S. Congressional Research Paper research Report of the U.S. Congress in October 2011, they have mentioned that Mr. Narendra Modi is uncorruptible. I am not saying that what America has said is a divine word, but the country which is so inimical that it is not ready to provide the visa are saying uninimical. And Aam Admi Party is saying in such an irresponsible manner. What they have done against uh, the notice from High Court on the foreign funding, they are replying nothing. The party who is getting support from a political party, Congress, whom they themselves characterize as chore and beiman, this is not our word. Is this your moral honesty? And your uh, law minister is facing the charges of eve teasing. And your chief minister is facing the charges of copyright act by Mr. Mr. Nagar. Okay, you made your point. And your Sudhan senior leader is saying something about the national okay. security. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to take this briefly to Mr. Pargaonkar so that Ashutosh can hear everybody first and then uh, and, and, and take take those points. Mr. Pargaonkar, is it a smart move by Arvind Kejriwal or is it something that w may not work uh, at the national level? Because look, at the end of the day, there are serious question marks perhaps over the methodology, over shoot, scoot and, and, and naming and, and, and you know, making allegations like this. But at the same time, like I said, a lot of people may just identify with that because of the strong anti-corruption sentiment in this country. Well, Lily, you know, there is one question which is on a, the minds of a lot of people. Is there a method in the madness of the Aam Admi Party or is madness the method? And they were, there was a time right in the beginning when one felt that this very non-conventional kind of politics that the Aam Admi uh, indulged in, there was a certain method in that. Uh, it might look anarchic, it might look completely uh, unconventional, but there was something to it. Then, of course, followed the dharna, then followed the, the, the midnight raid and so on and so forth, when people began to raise questions about it. My own view is that while the jury is out on this one particular question, the very the kind of reactions that you get from the established political parties, I think, does show, if nothing else, a certain lack of capacity to try and cope with this extremely unconventional brand of politics that the Aam Admi is, is playing. Uh, it's quite correct. I mean, the Aam Admi, for example, makes no distinction whatsoever, it appears to me, between an accusation, an allegation, a charge, and any conviction. 
I'm, this is contrary to, to, to everything that we know of. And similarly, the one word that they keep on using all the time, janta, janta, you don't know where janta means people, means a crowd, means a mob. So there is a huge amount of, con of confusion, but I believe that this list that they've come up to, uh, with, if nothing else, will ensure that between now and the end of the campaign, the Aam Aadmi Party will remain in the media eye for as long as it takes. But when and you to say, that extent, I Mr. think... Mr. Pardankar, when uh, you say that it's an unconventional... When you say it's an unconventional brand of politics that mainstream parties are, are still trying to grapple with, are you saying it's an unconventional brand of politics in a good way or an unconventional means irresponsible? I think it's too early to, to, to judge that. As of now, my instinct tells me that if they, they do not think through some of these things that they are doing, then it could turn out to be terribly dangerous because what they are doing is they are not really coming anywhere near spelling out their, their policies, their programs, their projects, their single-minded focus on, on anti-corruption can take you this far but no further. They have given us absolutely no inkling about how they're likely wanting to revamp institutions, for example, which institutions that need revamping. So at the moment, it seems to me that there is a big question mark about, about this party. It could go, I think, uh, to some extent to rejuvenate our national politics, but it could also, I think, undermine quite seriously Indian democracy.